good? Clearly you aren't, though. <laughs> Okay, how you doing? I'm Pat Society. I'm uh, here with Steve Soto from the Adolescents. Um, we're going to interview for the Punk Lounge. Um, so anyway, uh, give us a brief background of uh, the Adolescents. Adolescents, we started in uh, 1980. We uh, Tony and I had met, I used to play in Agent Orange, and he, we met at an Agent Orange show, and uh, decided to start a band together, and uh, here we are all these years later, <laughs> traveling all over, still doing it. And yeah, we would have never thought when we started that band in the garage of his mom's house that we would still be doing it now. So, so since you mentioned it, you, you were in the social distortion. No, no. Uh, Agent Orange. Agent Orange. Okay, stop it. Uh, uh, I can just edit it, right, but so, it's fine. Um, well, here's the deal. Social Distortion, Agent Orange, and the Adolescents, we all came from the same neighborhood. Yeah. We all grew up within, you know, a few blocks from each other. All our bands kind of, Social Distortion actually started first, and then we kind of started a little bit after that, but the original Social D didn't. Mike wasn't singing, he was playing guitar. Mm -hmm. um, there was a few versions, and at one point, first time I saw him, Casey Royer, who ended up in the adolescence, was playing drums, Rick Agnew was playing bass, and then Mike played guitar, and they had a singer named Tom Corbin. That was a long time ago. That was in 79. And I played in Agent Orange, and we started, both, that was, we started like 78, 79. That was me and Mike Palm and Scott Miller at the time. And a guy named Carlos Isais was in the band too when we first started. And that's when we all kind of met. And uh, there was a lot of people jumping around back and forth from different bands. And Frank Agnew played in a version of Social Distortion that Mike wasn't in. Mike quit at one point and then they got a different singer. I think Casey might have sang for a while. You know, it was all kind of convoluted incestuous but at, when it came time to making like our first records I guess Mike was the singer of SD with Dennis and uh, um, Chris Reese and I guess John Maurer or no it was Brent Lyles and Derek mm -hmm. that was first now did you, did you play on any you did play on a, a couple songs right for Agent I Orange sang, I, well, I played on, on Agent Orange I played on Bloodstained which, yeah which is the yeah, got in there knows. time for that one yeah and uh, El Dorado, Lord of You, Breakdown. So that's like the Pitch in the Summer 12-inch? Yeah, 12 inch but there's, well, I think that those, the, song, the versions I was on came later. They were on uh, uh, the Living in Darkness bonus tracks. Oh, okay. Because we did all demo stuff in this one. Yeah, I think they re-recorded the Pitch in Summer stuff. Oh, okay. But, um, but yeah, so, and then... So that's, you know, like, like I said, everyone kind of was like in and out of each other's bands a little bit mm -hmm. back then. And uh, at the adolescence, Tony and I started the band with a different, uh, different lineup. And Frank Agnew was in the first one. And then at some point, Rick and Casey came in. Now, at what point didn't you have Frank's son playing? That was later. That was in uh, 2004. Uh -huh. How long did you? Stay with the band. I think it was the band for like two years. And then uh -huh. came like back. I could see you at the church. In the yeah. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, yeah that was very nice. It's kind of almost like Jerry on his kid playing with Jerry. And it's pretty, it's, I don't know, I think it's Well, cool. then we had that other kid, Joe Harrison, playing for, with us for a while, for a long time. And me and Tony used to just tell people randomly, oh, that's my son. Oh, that's mm -hmm. my son. No, he, he wasn't any of our kids, but he was young enough to be. But, but Frank Jr. actually did, yeah, he did a couple tours with us and played for a while. Okay. So, let's talk about uh, the Blue Album, the Adolescent Album. It's regarded as a classic. Right? It's 
black flag damage, it's like comparable to something like that. Social distortion, Mongo Monster. I mean, it, it's an American, it's an American icon for punk rock in the United States. Like, do you get tired of playing this song? No. Um, some of the some of the stuff, like it's weird. Like, like sometimes when we're playing creatures. Like the irony to me is just like I I don't feel like this at all anymore. When we first started playing, I did. You know what I mean? Like, so some of that. But, but you know what? Like, like I love all those songs, and I mm -hmm. and I still enjoy playing them. I love playing Kids of the Black Hole. It's like I, I can remember the day that Rick showed me that song in my head. Like I remember sitting there going, "Whoa!" You know what I mean? It, it was different than anything else, anyone else that we knew in punk rock had done. So you know, like I still, like I love that record, and I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't burn out on that. There's, there's not really, like with our, with our stuff, like, I don't know, songs are kind of like kids, you know what I mean? It's like you can't, sometimes they might get on your nerves, but you're never going to stop loving them or whatever. But like all our songs, I, I love everything we've done, I, I, you know, if we could play, you know, Bruce Springsteen length sets, that would be awesome. But people don't have that attention span, you know what I mean? We would do it. We did it one night in Berlin. We played for two and a half hours. We played every song that we all knew, you know, that, that lineup knew. Does it ever get old of like saying like, I don't even want to go out and play that stuff. I want to play like something new. Fuck the kids. I don't care. Well, no, it's, I mean, I would hope that fans of our band would want to hear the new stuff too. I understand. Like when I go see a band, I want to hear the records that I know the best. I, I get that, you know, we mix it up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. be, we'll, tonight we'll play four songs at least off the new record um, and stuff off the last few records and plenty of stuff off the first record. Because I'm like, I mean, I've been going to shows since the mid-80s and I, I bought that, I bought the Blue Album cassette in, I want to say, 87 or something. I, was I, I love those songs. I'm sick of them. I, I, like, <laughs> I like hearing new music and I, I like when Bands put out new music and they play it, but I, I also understand the fact that somebody that might be have, have listened to the adolescents for twenty years may never seen you before, and right. they, they only want to hear that record yeah, they, because it's what they know. It's exactly it, and it, there's so much that goes into that because, like, when you're putting the set list together for that night, you don't know who's going to be there, what they want to see. Do you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and, and like for us, you know, like we like playing the new songs just because. We just wrote them this last year, so they're fresh to us. And it's like, yeah. But you know, I get that, that. You know, it's the same thing. Like someone that's never, maybe they've never seen the band before, and they want to hear who is who, or they want to, you know, what I'm saying. And, and, and so, yeah, you just don't. One time we played a show in Scotland, and after the show, a guy came up to me, and we did a record in the late '80s without Tony. That's called the uh, Bubble Fun, Fun Zone. Zone. Great record. Well, thank you. I I like some of it, but that one, I you know, actually Elijah's a big fan of it too. <laughs> but God. So, so this guy comes up to me after the show. And we don't play anything off of it. I know. And uh, this guy comes up to me after the show and he goes, uh, "I was really bummed that you guys didn't play anything off Balboa of Funds on it." And he goes, "That's the only record that I know of the adolescence. Like someone gave it to me, and, and he never, you know, went out." So I walked him over to the merch booth and I go, "Here's a blue record. You might want to check this thing out. And here's a couple of our other records." I just gave him to him. Like, I'm sorry you get to hear what you want. But you know, you know that that comes to a point too, where um, buying records, like when you were older or when when you were younger, it's it's not like it is today. Today, people don't really always buy records. They stream stuff. They download a song. Yeah. You know, like when you were, I think it was Triple X that was on, right? Yeah. Triple X. Yeah. So, like, if Triple X had really good distribution in Scotland. That might be what it, why he got that record, you know. Right. And you might not think of it as your best record, or Tony, not like he's not on it, but you know, somebody cling to it and they 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 um, mold themselves around it, and you know, they they like it a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's it's a, that's such a weird that's a, one of the hardest things I would say about doing all this is figuring out every night. All right, what well, we Play at night, you know. And last summer, we on the work tour, we played a different set every day. And that was seven weeks, and we would started coming up with themes. Let's take 
all the shortest songs we have. And so, you know, you have a 25 song set list, but they're all like minute, minute 20, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, and then the next day we took all the longer songs we had, Black, Kiss of Black Hole's five minutes plus. And so then we did like, you know, it, but it's just trying to figure out how to keep it interesting for us and make it cool for bands, of, you know. Some bands do a send us in, you know, set us. One song we, we don't play, I Hate Children, and people get bummed out, and, and it's, I, I understand, it's like the first song on the Blue Album. To me, me and Tony wrote that song on the telephone. We were laughing, it was like a joke, because he was watching his kids. Tony had pretty much, his mom, he was a you know, single parent household, so his mom went to work, and he watched his little brothers and sisters. And we wrote that laughing while he was watching his brothers and sisters, you know. Mm -hmm. And, but now, you know, like I'm the only one in the band that's never had kids, it doesn't have kids, but they all have kids, and they, you know. And people don't get it sometimes, like, I mean, and so we just kind of, and musically, it's so boring to play, you know, just like, <laughs> it's a drag. So that would be like the one song that we generally just don't play. But I also understand sometimes that people are bummed that we don't play it. And for that, I'm sorry. Well, when you guys um, you guys came back around, I guess it would have been early 2000s when you did OC Confidential, uh -huh. right? You had a, a long time of not playing, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, was there any, did you guys have other bands going on? Or yeah, like everyone that? was kind of doing... There was a, a band called... De Ads. A to Z, yeah, yeah, that was Tony. Tony that originally was Tony, Rick, and Casey. Mm -hmm. And Frank and I were just, Frank was, I don't know what Frank was doing. I never know what Frank's doing. Um, but uh, I, I was playing in a band called Joyride, and just kind of doing my own thing. And, you know, at the time, I we played like one show, and then, you know, with the original lineup. Mm -hmm. And then those guys wanted to keep playing, so they did A to Z. And at some point, when we started playing again in 2001, I think Tony did it easy up until like 2003 or something. Yeah, they did. I had three CDs, so yeah. I think that's and they're cool records. Like, yeah, I, you yeah. know, I, 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 he was a great band. After Rick and Casey left, he, he got like Bruce Duff, who was a great bass player. And you know, he had different, at one point, Mark Arnold from Big Drill Car was in it and stuff. Oh, great band. He always had great guys playing with him. So, um, but then, at some point, we started getting busy enough with the adolescents that took up, you know, like time. So he's totally a school teacher. Mm -hmm. So when school's in, there's not a lot, you know, you know we kind of, whatever holes he has, we try to fill them up with music, is what we're doing. And so, uh, you know, that, that, that was like a really great comeback record. I mean, I remember when I bought it, when you guys played at the church in West Philly. Before I even bought it, like I, I heard Hawks and Hawks and Bugs and uh, tell me for the other song is Cat, yeah, it's, <laughs> this is gonna overheat in a second. Okay, uh, so you have a new record out. It's coming out what's what's date? Uh, July twenty something. And it's called Crop Duster. Crop Duster. And it Crop features Duster. Donald Trump. Crop dusting a crowd of people on the on the cover. I like it. So you wanna tell us a little bit about it? Or? Well, you know, it, it, it's funny, like, because of the way everything's kind of going in our country, you know, obviously a lot of bands are putting out politically themed records or whatever. There's, it's, there's four or five songs that definitely deal with that, but, you know, there's a mix of other stuff, too. And when we first started writing the songs for this, and at first Tony came in and there wasn't anything mm -hmm. on Trump, and, and I go, I go, man, I thought you were going to throw down, like, the whole... And he goes, well, I don't think people want to hear me scream about him for a whole record, but I'm, I'll get to him. Don't worry about it. And the ones that did are great. There's a song called Just Because that is just, in fact, we're, we'll play that tonight. But um, there's a lot of great so There's a song he wrote about Sarah Huckabee called Queen of Denial. It's nice. really cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, Tony, he always comes correct lyrically. It's great. You know, that's... I always people ask us about the process of making records, and for us, we don't know what the vocals are going to be before we go in the studio. Like we have the music kind of, you know, like nailed down, but then he comes in and puts the vocals down. And 
I co-produce like the records with Paul, so I'm there from day one till it's over. And so, but that's like my favorite part is hearing what he's gonna do. It's like a surprise. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there and he's tracking and he's singing these lyrics and then, you know, we'll stop and we'll go to do another take or something. And I'll go, like, did you just say blah, blah, blah? And he's like, yeah, I'm all, that's beautiful. You know, and he's, he's never, it's never, there hasn't come a time yet in six records that we've done like this. Where I'm like, ah, dude, I don't know about that line. I don't, everything is always, you know, he always, it's a huge smile on your face when I'm hearing it. Because it's like, oh, that's cool, you know. He has these little twists that, you know, when you catch it, then maybe the first time through you don't hear it, then you're like, you just say, well, I give this. And, yeah, you know, it's great. It's, it's, but, um, so yeah, that's, you know, that's kind of how we do it. And, and like I said, he always, that's a, one of my favorite parts about playing in the band. Very, yeah. And I'm adding his, um, yeah, his lyrics. Yeah, okay. you know. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time no to problem. do this. And uh, you know, we look forward to hearing the new record when it comes out. I'm sure, I'll... we'll have them at Rebellion. Okay. Yeah. How do you bring it? Yeah, you must come home from Rebellion with like a billion yeah. things. Yeah. Do you ship that stuff off or what do you do? No, I take it. I just... I'm like a mule. I put it in. I buy the. If you go to Sports Direct, you can buy. Cat, it. say bye bye, punk lounge. Right. So anyway. And then you can talk. So anyway, I want to thank Steve here from the Adolescents for doing this uh, interview for the Punk Lounge and I'm Pat Society, Steve Soto, Adolescents. Bye. Let me see ya.